safe anybody hurt hey how's it going out there hey it's another day another day here another live stream coming you direct from Atascadero California and uh, Wes how you doing Wes you all dialed in over there uh, trying to get dialed in still back here had to uh, do some adjusting today for the big amp review which we're excited about I hear you Yep. Uh, yeah, I hear uh, something too in my computer. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that was, uh, by the way, that was Billy's Bounce, and I forgot to play it when we were on the bees. So that's why I played it there. Um, got a lot of things to do today. So, first off, we're going to be featuring an amp, uh, the wonderful Supro amplifier. 
the cleanest one they make that is for jazz. So we're gonna we're not gonna demonstrate its overdriven capabilities. We're just gonna check it out and dial in a nice tone and with tube, so it's a tube amp. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a tube amp, and uh, we got the Bud uh, Hendrickson Bud 10 back there as well that we're going to kind of do a little head-to-head -head action a little bit later in the show. But, um, yeah, this uh, Supro amp sounds sweet for sure, definitely. Yeah, uh, what is the official name of this thing? Uh, this is the Supro 1932R. 50 watt 112 combo. Nice. Supro 1932R Royale. Royale, okay. 50 so. watt 112 combo. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's a catchy name. It's otherwise <laughs> known as the Supro Royale. The Supro Royale. Okay, good. Yeah. Royale. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're going to be digging into that. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to play some different guitars through it so you can kind of get an idea of what it's like. Um, we also are going to be looking at, uh, well, that's about it. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, we're going to talk about the workshop, the workshop and uh, we're going to talk about the Jazz Fest that we 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 had now we're looking for this well let's just start year. talking about them okay let's start the, the the camp talk about the camp two slots left for oh, the camp right this is going to be the biggest camp you guys have ever had well maybe that's what mom said well i know but you <clears throat> and there's two spots left there's two spots left however yes i'm I'm positive it'll be a good camp. I think we have 32 guitar players and what, nine bass players, something like that. So it's going to be evenly spread out, you know, one bass player to three guitar players. But, um, uh, you know, things always happen at the very end. You know, guys get sick or whatever. And so, but I hope that won't happen. Because... Uh, it's really a wonderful thing to come to. And if you're not going to come to it now, when are you going to come to it? I mean, <clears throat> you might as well jump in and get started. My goodness. Don't put it on your bucket list anymore. We don't know. The, uh, my bucket's got a hole in it. So uh, you don't want, you don't want uh, to put off everything all the time. We also have some RV sites. Uh, so guys can come with an RV. And remember, the group is divided into three groups. A, B, C, depending on uh, skill level. And uh, we, we, we put real hard songs in group A and kind of medium songs in group B and simpler group songs in group C. However, you know, they're, none of them are easy. But then you go and you... Um, um, get in there and we'll have classes every day with each one of the teachers and you're going to be divided. So you won't have 32 people in one class. So if that's what you're worried about, don't be worried about that. And then we have, you know what, we, we have classes during the day. We start at 9 o'clock in the morning with breakfast. And it's a wonderful breakfast. This place they, they put on the they really do a great job with the food. Yeah, the food is very good there for sure. Yeah, and then um, and then uh, we go into classes, and pretty soon it's lunch, and then we eat some more, and then do a couple more classes. Uh, you got a big break in there. Then we have dinner, <laughs> and you guys can rehearse. You you know get people play with each other and stuff. Then at night we have our concerts uh, starting at 7 o'clock and we get students up to play in their groups and, and uh, that's the whole thing about the camp is it's learning how to play together, listening to one another and that's a big deal. And then yeah. uh, 
then the teachers play a few tunes and then we're go to bed and do it again and then you you get to play uh in a band with gary newmark on drums that's right so if you saw him at the jazz festival the guy's a monster drummer so he'll be your drummer all yeah. week all week that's what right. could be better that's right. and then you also forgot to mention bruce foreman is the te one of the te guest teacher guest it's you teacher. mike dana mike dana wonderful teacher wonderful and uh bruce foreman coming back for year number two and of course todd johnson it's only one, you know, there's a handful of bass players that can do what he does in the world. And yeah, he's one of, he's fantastic. So uh, yeah. you got, you got him too. Jeez Louise. And Todd does a class for guitar players, doesn't he? Well, no. Um, doesn't he talk to him about? Not anymore. Xnade from no. the agenda? Yes. Bummer, that seemed like a, would be a good class. You're like, what? What does the bass player want to hear from me? What pisses the bass player off? I need to know. I'm sure, Todd Richmond has a has a couple of insights on that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, so yeah, there's two spots left on that. So if you if you're looking to go, get in touch with us. Uh, there's a link in the description. Um. There's a link in the chat as well. So uh, yeah, it's uh gonna be a good time, and uh, you got a couple couple spots it left our friend don spain just signed up he was at right. the jazz festival and now he's coming to the yosemite camp it's workshop. not a camp oh sorry it's a lodge it's okay. like a summer camp you know well, we, we we make it sound like that but each room is really nice man and uh it's yeah i call we call it camp i'm sorry i've just been calling it that for years but really it's a we're at a beautiful lodge so don't worry you don't have to bring your tent or your coleman stove or your lantern bring yeah a i mean it's like going to summer camp as a kid you're not camping you're in a lodge you know that's what that place is you know it's a summer right. camp for but there's no um uh, and when you go to summer camp, aren't you bunked with a bunch of people? Uh, you can be for sure. Yeah. I mean, they have that there, but we don't use it. So right. anyway, um, so yeah, anyway, the li the links there in the chat. So, uh, let's move on to the next topic and that is the jazz guitar fest. Fest. The jazz guitar fest. We're in the middle of scoping out some new venues for it. We hope to have a venue and a date nailed down, gosh, I hope within a few weeks. A couple yeah. weeks, it'd be nice. Yeah, we looked at one facility um, and it was okay, but gosh, they wanted so much money for it and stuff. And it's like, yeah, I don't, and you gotta guarantee them, you know. So yeah, we didn't do that. It, it was okay too. It didn't really, so we're looking at some others that are totally bitching. Yeah. Uh, Jeez. Yeah. So we're we're basically we're looking right now between seeing Santa Barbara and Monterey, uh, Cambria Pines Lodge, where we had the first festival at the beginning of March. It was just a little too small for us. I think this next one's going to be much bigger. So we need a bigger, badder facility. So we're looking at something like this right here <laughs> oh yeah I hilton know. in santa barbara right on the beach right here it's just a beautiful spot so we got calls into them um super cool super cool place for sure it's got this would be insane if we could get it if we if we do it here um looking at something like this in monterey uh look at that right just on the water we want to get you guys close to the water so you guys have some ocean views, you know, just a nice relaxing yeah. time. You can walk down to the beach. Um, this place right here, Monterey Tides. That's so cool. Oh man, they have it there. That's a, a private beach for the hotel, by the way. So you're not gonna be packed with people. You can go down there, walk around in between classes, whatever. It's got some beautiful meeting rooms with, uh, mm -hmm just a lot of ocean views you're going to see a lot of the ocean there so um so 
that's just a kind of a handful of or a few of the the feelers we got out right now and just wanted to get it back on your radar that the uh it's gonna be coming up soon um yeah wc yeah. ray put a dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign but to be honest not going to be that much more expensive than where we were at last time. So. That's true. It's crazy. Yeah. So crazy. we're excited to just make it big. And th these facilities that I just showed you can hold three times as many people. So right. we're hoping to get at least 200, maybe 300 people at the next one. So it's going to be bigger, better, well, and have, uh, more gear to check out. I'll have a lot more vendors. Bigger concerts. Yeah. So... So anyway, just want to get that on your radar that we're working behind the scenes, getting uh, doing what we can to lock that down. No, Todd, sorry, Motel 6 in Lompoc, adjacent <laughs> to the federal prison. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good, good idea. Hey, we could probably get that place for pretty cheap. So I don't know about the banquet space, mm -hmm. what they can hold. But there is a place in Santa Inez that we're uh, looking at, too. The Marriott there is pretty big and pretty cool. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. somewhere in the Central Coast, we're going to find a spot pretty soon here. And uh, so, yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Hi yeah, Highway 1 is a mess, yeah. Um, so, um, by the way, this is the uh, 2013 L5 that I played on. Somebody made a comment, like it was very handsome. I think that was Mark. Mark, how you doing? Anyway, um, who's with us today? Yeah, so Salvador Tenorio uh, is here. He was wondering about, what about the Roland Jazz Amp? Is that a tube amp? Uh, Aren't those? I feel like those are solid state. Uh, anyway, we do not have one of those, sadly, today, Salvador. So Supreme versus uh, Hendrickson. Uh, we love Sergio Mendez and Brazil 66. Gosh, I forget. Um, <laughs> Ozzy and Harriet and Ricky. Ah, Ricky Nelson, yeah. Don Spain's here. He's over in Kansas. <laughs> Lewis Taylor <laughs> in Chicago. Rob Ketterer in Mary's, Mary Mayville, Wisconsin. Thomas Pochka in Germany. What's up, buddy? I believe to Tusi Ma is also in Germany. He says he's got hooked on the D'Angelico DNA. Mm -hmm. uh, those Hendrixons seem to be good, but it, we never played one like the Supro Keeley Custom. Um, get a Roland Blues Cube stage, perfect for jazz, blues, funk, not that annoying 80s Roland jazz tone. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I've never been a big fan of the Rolands. I, I had a Roland Cube forever, and... Um, I put a JBL in it and stuff, and I played that. It's a little noisy. Um, in the Roland Jazz Chorus, um, I know they're supposed to be great amps, but they they just didn't do it for me. Sorry. Yep. Um, let's see. John uh, Burkhart from South Dakota, Western South Dakota. What's up, buddy? Richard Bishop's always in the house. How's it going, Richard? Tom Colhane. Connecticut. Hey, Tom. Todd Richmond down in Lompoc. Mark Larkins. Lachlan's here. Lachlan's going to the camp, oh. too. Yellowstone. Yellowstone. <laughs> yeah, don't go to Yellowstone. <laughs> I love it. He's also in the Master Blaster class that we just uh, started <laughs> doing. Love it. Um, David Bronson down in Jacksonville. And uh, four on six is in Charlotte. That's WC Ray and, and uh, four on six are both from Charlotte. Big Steve, Olympia. How's it going, Steve? Alan Biggs from Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Oh, that'd be a good place to be right now. And then uh, Rob's here. What's up, Rob? Rob, is that Robin? Yep. Rob Briggs. And, Hi, Rob. Uh, James McNamara. How's Masterpiece Pizza Maker. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, James over in Dallas. What's up, James? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, Jim Rolfe. Jim Rolfe. And Jacob in Mission VAO. Man, those guys are camp camp guys, too. Andrew from uh, New Jersey. Adrian Lee. What's going on, Adrian? Uh, I think that's about it. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Mark Shelley. 
Mark here just signed on to the jazz camp. Mark Shelley. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, fantastic, Mark. Sweet. And then uh, Danielle uh, Emberly, she's a regular here. Um, often tempted to try Vintage 47 EH185 tube amp from San Pedro, California. Huh. Is that the brand name, Vintage 47? Or is it, are you talking about a 1947 model? Hmm. Um, now Flying is here. Peter, he's over in Elk Grove. What's up, Peter? SF, AFG, does anyone have impulse responses for the speakers from a Polytone Mini Brute or Henriksen? Impulse response? I don't even know what that means. Yeah. Uh, maybe Rob knows. Rob could fill us in. Yeah, what does that mean, AFG? Let, uh, we wanna, I'm curious. Uh, Pat Evans just popped in. Pat, it's over in Fresno. What's up, Pat? Good to see Hi, you. Hi, Pat. I hope you're feeling better. And then uh, Don Boudreau. Hey, Don. Don's a uh, jazz guitar accelerator student here. And uh, mm -hmm. loving it. We got a lot of accelerator students here. We got a few slots left for that. So if you're looking to get some one-on-one -on -one jazz coaching, a really intense way to get better quickly, just go to the website here, jazzguitaraccelerator.com. Hmm. See how I put all these? Hey, if you want the man, it's like a, a you know driving across country and yeah. seeing billboards. Wow. Yeah. Jazz guitar improv, Library. all all this stuff. Check it all out. JGI. Yep. Yeah. So anyway. Um, how about we, uh, oh, Micmap just popped in. What's up, Francis? Switzerland. Francis, we've house. missed you on the, the Jazz Mastermind. You've yeah. Been, you've been absent. So the Jazz Mastermind is a, is kind of the, the next step after you do the accelerator. Then you can, you, you can go into the uh, accelerator mastermind group class. So that we just started that earlier this month, and it's been pretty fun, right? True. It's been a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun, and it's nice to see people do their homework and uh, uh, have some nice arrangements and stuff, like Lachlan. And uh, well, they're 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 all great. Yeah. Um, so Mick Mick Mac said he was sleeping, but that's fair because he'll, <laughs> he'll often sleep. join join well, and it's two in the morning. Two over in there. the morning. Yeah. So, well, hopefully we'll see you on Friday, for sure. Uh, yeah. Totally Tuberous, uh, he's Rob as well. He's over Massachusetts. Tim Patchen. Hey, Tim. Tim Patchen. What's up, buddy? Hey, Tim, we went over to, what is that? Anas uh, Asilomar. Asilomar. We went over there, did an extensive look at the facilities, which were fantastic. But... Um, Man, if you want to use the hall there, you've got to guarantee 150 rooms, and I'm it's a lot of guaranteeing. So uh, we decided probably to pass on that. Yep. Tim's up there by in the Monterey area. Yeah. It's a nice little spot. Um, what hey, we... where is my Severson string set, David Bronson said. <laughs> he ordered it over an hour ago. <laughs> well, we get our drone shipping. I uh, haven't oh, put yeah. that into uh, effect yet, but hopefully one day. It's a good reason to buy a drone. Yeah. Um, let's see. So AFG is actually Greg in Texas. Um, he said, uh, or or um, we we did get get a response from Todd of all people. He's. Todd for what? Uh, impulse, impulse response IR is an EQ profile that models a particular speaker cap cabinet. Can use them oh. with a PA setup or to get a guitar amp tone. Um, hmm. And then... Uh, yeah, Rob says, where I've, did you find I've never those? never seen IRs for speakers. Um, oh, Kwanzaa Gaming and Anime is here. Jay, there's Jim, uh, James McRomer. Excited to see, that's Will. Excited to see everyone at the workshop. Hmm, awesome. Wesley G, great name there over in Germany. Cool. 
All right, so uh, let's see. Well. Yeah, so James says hasn't been to Monterey or Carmel in years. Would love to get back there. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. It's, mm-hmm. it's such a nice spot up there, man. It's beautiful. Pine trees everywhere. Uh, Jim Rolf says, I worked at Polytone for a few years. That's where I, yep. I met. I, I worked at Polytone. That's where I met Joe Pass, Norman Brown, Bella Fleck, Ron Eshte, who all used Polytone amps at one time. Yep. There's a picture of uh, Jim Rolf and uh, Joe Pass in a Jaguar. Yeah. Whose Jaguar was that? Was that the owner's? I was just curious. What was his name? Tony? Tony? Uh, uh, I forget the owner's name. Anyway, accordion player. Those polytones, and I got one here. By the way, for local people, the uh, Central Coast Guitar Show is coming up in 10 days in San Luis Obispo. So um, we're going to be there. I don't think we uh, secured any our spot yet. I could be wrong. Uh, uh, Joel Henderson's here, too. Hey, Joel. Joel, are you coming to the workshop? Huh. Yeah, hopefully. That would be sweet. Well, that would be sweet. That would be a fun time. Um, yeah, bring your bring bring your dentist friend <laughs> with his tools and yeah, stuff. Trade out some dentist work there. Yeah. Okay, so I, I was going to play Fool's Rush In, by the way, which Elvis and Ricky Nelson had covered. I was going to do it... Be- yeah, Tommy. Tommy was the name from the guy in, uh, from Polytone. Jim Rolf has had an interesting career. He he worked for um, a record importer and imported records from all over the world. I forget the name of that company. It turned out to be a big company. And then they started doing their own stuff. But anyway, I was going to play Fool's Rush In because I didn't play it last week because my my uh, MP3 player decided not to work. So I thought I'd play it again if that's okay. Here it comes. Ready? Yep. Oh, crap. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Got to adjust it.
so that do you have any uh reverb on that thing you know it doesn't sound like it does it i thought no. i had it up i would say a little bit which we set up a cool little another camera for you guys here so we could check out the sounds a little better with a little reverb doesn't it yeah so um shall we get into this amplifier yeah okay there it is all right so what do you got here you got volume and you got this boost now i i will come back to that you got these three little switches here here's a switch for the boost this is for the reverb <laughs> Um, and then you've got the loop switch. It'll take you into your pedals if you want. Which it doesn't do anything because I have nothing set up. And then we've got, now here's what's kind of funny about it. You've got the, I, it seems to me like they, they've got, got the letters going the wrong way. Because you're, you're st usually stand in front of the amp. And when you stand in front of it, you see it says bass here. Shouldn't it be bass here? You know what I mean? And then anyway, the knob, so that's no bass. There's bass. So um, the little indicator for the knob is, is, is right there, which it seems like, at first I thought it's kind of back asswards. Anyway. All right, so there's there's that. And then your reverb level and dwell in a master volume. So minimal uh, controls on that, which is a plus. Now, maybe you could explain to me about this one thing here. It says class A or class A. I got you. So it B. says uh, the... 5881 loaded power amp in the Royale offers a choice of class A 35 watt or class AB 50 watt operation. Oh. Yeah, class A mode delivers the traditional cathode cathode biased supro sound with a bold spongy mid-range. Mm. Class AB delivers a grid biased California sound with more scooped mid-range tighter bass, and faster transient response. Okay. Let's see if we can tell the difference, okay? Sure. Here's, uh, here, here it is on A. Oh, I, I notice a difference right away. Wait a minute. sound a hair tighter, doesn't it? The A, B uh, one? Yes. Yeah, I agree. And I think, like it says in the description here, that the uh, Supro, the Class A, with a more bold, spongy mid-range, I definitely think you can hear both of those pretty clearly when you go back and forth. Yeah. I... I've never heard a sponge before. I I define it not as spongy but as looser. Tight to loose. There's So it also too right now what you're hearing is a combination too of the the amp mic and the overhead so you're getting kind of two sounds let me oh. kill that amp mic and yeah. then just play the play it through the overhead and then here's here's just the uh Yeah, cool. 
sound. You know, I, uh, I we had this amp over at the uh, Jazz Fest, and um, it was next to our booth, and we had a couple of J uh, or uh, D Angelico guitars there, and um, and the amp, and uh, some fellas came along and played it. Actually, one of them, Paul, one of my uh, students, came and was playing it. Played it for a long time, and I was thinking, God dang it, that some again sounds really good. So. Uh, I think it's for me. It it it's a little different than uh, than the other amps. I'm not, uh, but it's not. It's not like a Fender. It's not like a Fender. It doesn't have that same voicing as a Fender. Right. Uh, this has a, a nice voicing. Uh, it's... <laughs> And it's it's you know it it's almost like a kind of a cross between like a solid state like a Hendrickson or Quilter, but with a little more of that tube character on it. Yeah, and you you really hear it, I think, in on the on the D and A strings. So Todd's Here's the bass. Todd says how the power section runs, class A will break up differently than A B, but you'd have to be running it fairly hard to get power tube distortion. A B is more efficient and should be tighter. Abnormal. Abnormal. Well that's uh that's cool. Um yeah, so uh, let's see. This boost is an interesting feature down here, Wes. Go go to this camera, buddy. So uh, I'm going to turn the boost way down. I'm going to put it on. It's not like a gain or overdrive. What does it say about that boost? Is it just louder? Um, I'm not sure. Hold on, let me see if I can see that, figure that out. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything in the uh, description. There it is without it. Let's play something with, with the boost on. Is it too loud, Wes? I can adjust it back here. Doesn't sound too loud. We add some more verb. I gotta start. God, please, no! 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 <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, all right already. All right, so um, was it Mark Long? Somebody wanted Opus to fun. Yeah, that was Mark. And I like that song, so therefore I will play it. Here it comes. You've got to adjust the level. Okay. Because it's funky. Got it. Thank you. 
Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think the, the consensus here is that it's just kind of like a lead boost type of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Todd said they don't say in the manual boost is probably just an adjustable level boost, but not clear if it is pre amp or post it is foot switchable. So probably used as a, a lead boost. Yeah. We didn't get the. I don't, we didn't get well. The, yeah, yeah. The foot pedal costs extra. In the cover too, probably, huh? Uh, I don't know that they make a cover for it. They it's don't make a cover. For I mean, they might. I, I, it doesn't. I mean, the come. cabinet is so beautiful. Yeah. You gotta have a cover for this. I I have some extra covers. Oh, a little feedback. All right. So um, that's the yeah, sound it of cool. it. Let's let's use a different amp. Uh, I mean, not not amp. Excuse me guitar yeah for sure so Dude. here's a couple of photos if you're kind of wondering what it looks like hold on oops got it oh yeah got because a, yeah it's hard to see there isn't it got a hook can't uh oh there we go um but it is a super cool looking amp probably one of the slickest looking amps i've i've seen in a while um it's got the uh got like a hemp grill cloth on it so pretty pretty sweet it's got that old school design look to it here's kind of the how the speaker sits in there um yeah so very well designed amp retails for 14.99 um there's a look at the top uh one of the definite definite things that you'll notice about it is that it is heavy it's heavier a lot heavier than the, the Henriksen. the thing weighs 40 pounds ish something like that let's see if i can get the exact weight well, i thought i saw it somewhere 49 pounds on that bad boy so if uh you're old and you don't like lugging around amps <laughs> this that could be an issue but you know that's that's one of the big ev what tube amp is light <laughs> good point you know if you want to use a tube amp you're going to be used to lugging around a big amp like pat kelly's amp man Whew, that thing is uh, i yeah. didn't drag that thing up and down the stage that basement holy shit yeah it weighs a lot it's nice and sounds great but yeah you definitely need a cart if you're gigging Otherwise, you're going to uh, get a nice little shoulder workout uh, dragging that thing along for sure. But uh, so we got the uh, Style B here, which is definitely a fan favorite with you guys. A lot of people love the sound of this guitar, which for good reason, the thing sounds awesome. Um, but Supro, D'Angelico owns Supro. Mm -hmm. So they're uh, mm -hmm. they're kind of under the same umbrella, so we were curious to hear how these two these two things kind of pair together, um, and yeah, what the difference of the sound from that L5 definitely. So you know, um, see that Frank Potenza played a twin and carting a twin around. I mean. I remember saying to him, what are you, like Superman or something, you know? Um, and uh, he said, well, it, you know, I put it on a cart, you know, so it's okay. Just getting it in and out of the car, that's all. Right. You know? Yeah, that's what, that's what Pat was saying, too. He's like, I, just, I have this cart I've been using for years, and, you know, you just have to do one big lift to get it out of the trunk and put it on the cart and you're good so all it takes is one big lift and now you got a hernia right <laughs> uh you're pushing too hard you're pushing on me yeah and gordon says hey gordon how's it going buddy he's over in birmingham uk uh it's a lot lighter than my fender 212 so i would say that uh yeah 
Somebody selling uh, selling a '66 Fender Princeton. It's funny. The last time I had a I had a blackface '66 Princeton, I sold it for six hundred dollars. Wow. Oh my God. What would press, it be? Press what, a button. Would it? What would it be? Uh, <laughs> now it's about six thousand. I don't know. No, I I I don't really know. I I I, I don't know. But, you know, you buy those old amps, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the caps, you know, the caps are old, 60-year-old caps, and those things start leaking, making noise and stuff. It's got to be recapped and all that jazz. Uh, Greg in Texas has a question here. Rich, how do you feel about playing smaller speaker amps, 10s, 8s? Quilter sold me on 8s. Um, because their, their spiel or their, was that the fact the eight has a wider dispersion pattern than a 12, the bigger the speaker, the more direct it is. But, um, and I think that's true. I think that's very true. So, uh, the quilter with the eights or something that, uh, I thought was nice. Now, an 8 certainly has its own little sound to it. It's real tight. This, The ones in the uh, Micro Pro is a full range, uh, high-end speaker. And I thought it was pretty nice. But it doesn't, you know, it's, it's a different sound than a 12. Now, the Quilter made a 12. I couldn't stand the sound of that amp with a 12. This with a 12 is nice. And the Hendrix has got... A ten in it, which I think is fine. I played tens for years with with the vibro, with the vibro Lux, two tens. I thought it, I thought it was nice and tight and stuff. So I don't know. They're they're all just a little different. So, yeah, the Princetons were originally student practice amps back in the day. You're right about that. Well, and then also, too, Henriksen also has the Bud 6 model. Right. So, and those sound pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy, that yeah. little thing. Those are super cool. I'd love to get my we, hands on We have on two of them running in stereo. Yeah, I mean, or just, you know, for singing and playing or two people plug into it. I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. weighs like 10 pounds. Yeah, you, you know, the, um, um, yeah. I mean, because any other amp that small is like a little weird, yeah. cheesy, you know, like all the small little practice amps are like, they're made for like playing rock. Oh, I know, know what I wanted to say. You know, I, I've, I read where Keith Richards, Richards uses a champ, champ amp to record with. Really? Yeah. I think the Super Champ is a hell, hell of an amp. Uh, I have a uh, Princeton Reverb many, many years ago that uh, I had Paul Rivera modify. That son of a gun screamed. And uh, I had him put a line out on it. Um, and I put it... Uh, that was with the Dick Clark show. I would take that thing on these big stages and uh, just just have the guy plug it in with the line out, you know, line take the line out. I'd crank that sucker. Man, that thing rocked. Wow, this, this guitar sounds nice with this amp. Are you digging this? Yeah, it does. It sounds really cool. Uh, totally wow. Tuberous said... Uh, not many players know that a traditional Fender tube amp will give you essentially flat response if you turn the treble and bass controls to one. That's very true because so often you think that five is nothing. But really, it, yeah, it's one. And sometimes they won't even work, right? You've got to have it a little bit past one to, to, to make it work. But the... Uh, yeah, that the Fender. What you want to do with that, with a jazz guitar, is to put it on zero and work for one, 
and work your way up from there. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a bunch of feedback all over the place. And you get used to that big sound, you know, that big, that big sound. And then you think, this is what we need for a jazz guitar. Well, not, not so. Um, wow, this is sweet. Wait a minute, man. Hold on here now. Boy, yeah, that sounds that great. That is a beautiful sound. So we're on the uh, boost. I got a little reverb. It's pretty much flat on the amp. Uh, a little bit of bass. Let's see. She's getting hot. It's getting hot there, Wes. Yeah, I'm going to kill that overhead mic here real quick so we can just hear that guitar because I feel like I'm getting a lot of... Uh, overhead? Okay. Yeah, well, kill a that. lot of just acoustic sound off that. Oh, thing, well, that, that could be. That wow. thing is loud for sure acoustically. Yeah. Yeah. So here you go. Yeah, that's nice sounding for sure. That's a good combo right there. It's those style Bs, man. Just those things sound really good. I know. You can't, man. That's for that sixteen ninety nine for that thing. It's. I know. No, Plus, it's... it just looks freaking cool, man. <laughs> that's true. I love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, somebody said, what do you think about the Jazz Chorus 22? Yeah, it's a small version of the big 120 and has two six-inch yeah. speakers. That That's interesting. Yeah. Um, who, wait, who, make, who makes that? Well, Roland. Oh, got it. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think I've ever played out of one. Um, okay, so let's play a tune with this, shall we? With this configuration? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, that's the kind of enthusiasm I'm looking for, Wes. Yeah. yeah. Let me see. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to adjust the volume consistently. Oh, I'm well aware of adjusting the volumes. <laughs>
Is it over? Yes, <laughs> it is. Oh my God. Oh, they're conflicted. They're <laughs> they want more, I think. Now this half of the room. This um, is let's see. Curtis Chavez said uh, here, interesting comment. Uh, when the Lawrence Welk show guitarist switched from a jazz box to a Strat, it still sounded great, but it wasn't the same. The Strat was okay for solos, but had no rhythm authority. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Todd, and then Todd said, the main advantage to the jazz chorus is the stereo chorus that is on board. The amp itself is more on the sterile side, which may work for you. Yeah. And can be a decent pedal platform. Yeah, and the stereo chorus sounds great when you're standing in front of it. It's really a bitchin' sound. I don't know if it translates into the audience. And I've said that about reverb, too. I, I remember I... Uh, went to hear a friend of mine, and uh, he sounded wonderful. And uh, he said, you want to sit in? And so I did, and I went went to play, and it was like just drowning in reverb. And I thought, that is so weird, because it didn't sound like it. It didn't sound like that in the audience. But when I got up there, it's like the reverb is like, I mean, unbelievable. So it's kind of weird. It was almost like the reverb didn't transfer out to the audience for some reason. And I think that that may be true about the jazz chorus. Notice I said may, so that nobody calls up and says, hey, you're, you're totally wrong. I mean, that's how it's always been in with using effects on vocals for me. You, you sit there and talk into the mic when no one else is playing, and you're like, dude, you're going to use that much reverb? And then you start playing, you can't hear the, re you barely hear a little tinge of the reverb. Yeah. You know, so, I don't know, I think it definitely loses ground when it gets pushed way out there, or when it's competing with other sounds. Yeah, yeah, true. So. Um, who was the guitar player with the Learn Swelk show? Was that Buddy, Buddy, what was his name? Buddy, I thought it was Buddy something. Anyway, you know, the Lawrence Welk show was the first show to become syndicated. It was also the first, the reason those guys stuck with him, because Lawrence Welk shared the profits with the band. It's a big deal. Yeah. So, they man, that, that style B, though, oh, that's, that's a good combo right there. You're not going to go wrong with that. That yeah. sound. But the Style B sounded great, just plugged into the, the mixer, too. But, man, it really stands out with that amp. You know, I'm getting so used to this overhead mic picking up things that I kind of miss it when you, t when you shut it off. I think it's kind of neat, you know? Mm -hmm. Makes me think that, man, next time I record, I'm going to... If I ever record again. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I would like to. I want to. I just don't do it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. If I was recording any guitar, I would probably record, th put three mics on the situation. Shall we try the this one with... Yeah, the, let's... The P90. The P90, yes. So that's the Gibson ES350. Correcto. Um, What's going on down there? With the P90s. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Talk look look out, look Come out, on. look out. Kill some time. Stretch. <clears throat> What's going on here? Oh. Okay. Whew. Man, that was a close call. Yeah, you make me nervous back there. You make me feel so nervous. Gonna dance the night away. Curtis Chavez uh, agrees with the... Uh, Style B, and same with Gordon, man. That's it's just a cool guitar all around. Yeah. The look. Yep. Um, WC Ray said a friend of his uh, played tuba in the Lawrence Welk band. Oh, wow. Until he wrote the Oscar Mayer Wiener jingle. <laughs> wow. He's, man, that guy's got to be still making money off that. Don't they still use that jingle? How, how, how does that jingle go? 
My uh, first name, oh, my baloney has a first name. It's O S C A R. Something like that. My baloney has a sick last name. Something, ooh, mama, come to papa. <laughs> Clay just joined us. Uh, Clay, Blues up, Bone, yeah. He says, dang, I always see the post late Thursday. I wish a reminder went out Wednesdays, but probably just me and busy schedule. You know, maybe we should just do that. More do what? Send out a reminder on Wednesday. Well, we you could. That, that would be a good idea. Yeah. We are going to. Mark your calendar. It's every Thursday. That's true. You should just set an alarm on your phone now. Thursdays, 11 a.m. Boom. Okay. So that thing sounds pretty sweet too. Jump a little record that I want my jockey to play. Roll over Beethoven, gotta hear it again today. You know, on that they go, you know, I always play the F of them, you gotta hear it again today. It's the other way around, da -da -da -da, gotta hear it again today. All right, enough of that. Could you buy the Oscar Mayer Wiener truck? I. You know what? You when you go to the uh, Fort Museum, the Greenwich Village Museum, and uh, in Greenwich, the Ford Museum, they got Wienermobile there. Yeah. Yeah, that. So they got they got the chair that Lincoln was assassinated in, and the Wienermobile. <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. Very comparable moments in history, for yes. sure. Yes. Yeah. But you know that Wiener Mobile. Have you ever watched the show? It's one of my favorite shows. It's called The Food That Built America oh, on the History Channel. I've never seen that. It's That's a great it. show. Is like, it? I mean, it talks about so many brands that have been around for a hundred, you know, hundred and fifty years. Campbell's Soup's been around for a hundred and twenty-five years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But Oscar Mayer, they, they the struggles of like how to get the hot dog because hot dogs were first just known to be nothing but you know junk word yeah and then oscar meyer came out and we're like no we're gonna wrap this red label around every single hot dog to know that it's high quality meat and oh, then, yeah and so they that's where they <laughs> and then and then the um one of the main guys was like he was talking about building the Wienermobile and oh, nice. the but the the main boss was like, no way, no way, <laughs> don't do it. He he went ahead and did it anyway, and it turned out to be a huge hit. Like all the kids loved seeing it, and oh, yeah. everywhere it went, it and went it to shopping centers, going yeah. around the country, and it was just like the boss guy was just like, man, I was remember I those, was wrong. Did you ever have a uh, Wiener whistle? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that's no. what you kids are calling it now. Yeah, yeah. wiener whistle. Yeah, they had a wiener whistle. Yeah. Um. <laughs> we better drop that one right there. Yeah. So what are you gonna play on that? Let's. let's... Can you shut the overhead? Let's let's hear what it sounds like without it. Yeah. Real quick. <laughs>
Um, that that's that guitar sounds good too, man. I, I like it. That amp, pretty. It definitely brings out the tone of each guitar. It does very yeah, well. It, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm liking that for sure. Here's that. Oh gosh, your <laughs> stupid back pickup thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. So yeah. All right. So um. Anyway, there's that. Yeah. Why don't you play a, a little, uh, do you have a track you could play with oh, that one? Sure, sure. And then I think after that, this, we should, uh, we'll get out the Eastman back there. And then we'll play the same song through the Royale and then through, the, and then we'll switch over to the Bud 10. See if we can notice okay. a, a difference. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, this, you know, last week I, I, I played, somebody asked for Fly Me to the Moon. And I, I did the track. I didn't have the track, but I wanted. Um, 
Yeah, still lo loving that, that guitar. John uh, Burkhart said, uh, I didn't particularly like the sound of this guitar last week, but sounds really good through the amp. Yeah. I, I'm going to be, I'm on board with that, John. I think that's, yeah, definitely. Well, I don't know. Last <laughs> week you were playing this, that double pickup thing the whole time, so. Well, the, uh, um, I can't help it. Uh, WC Ray's uh, <laughs> asking if you could switch the the amp. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. This is class A. Here's class A B. And we have the boost on, by the way. Boost. Boost. That's what my mom used to drink. This is an interesting guitar. Uh, I um, hmm. Wes? Yeah, so why don't we get down the Eastman okay. 8, 810. 810, this is 17-inch. Um, and then we'll do a, a comparison between the two amps with this particular guitar. Okie dokie. John Smith uh, is asking for you to play Here's That Rainy Day. He is. So okay, maybe that's something. But I, I would, I would love to do the, the two songs, two of the same song, on the amp with the uh, comparison. Okay. And why, why do you want to use this guitar in particular? Because that's the only guitar that we haven't used yet, and we're running out of time here. I see. Okay, hold on. Plus, you still need to talk about the. Uh, this guitar over here oh yeah which is has no strings on it uh -huh, no strings attached no tuners attached no tuners attached and it looks like some pretty new pickups in that thing yeah i, I actually i do want to talk about that guitar because i need a little advice from you guys well this is the right place to get advice yeah What's what do you what we'll give talk us a about little, give us a little tease while you put your well color 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 of the uh, hardware oh gotcha and the Mike are card. you gonna paint that thing yeah he's gonna paint yeah it flat black <laughs> yeah <laughs> matte finish white and this is another that's guitar. what you don't have you don't have a white guitar you need you need a White. Colonel, Colonel Sanders guitar. Yeah, white jazz box. I yeah. had one at one time. It's a peerless. Todd Richman said it's the rare Gibson Air guitar. <laughs> yeah. They only made it a few years. I think Berkeley's got an air, air guitar course. Wow. That doesn't shock me, but it should. Yeah, 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 then we'll paint it flat black and get a Marshall in here. And we'll go with that tone, see what, see what happens there. Okay, all right, all right, here we go. So um, you're going to play Here's That Rainy Day? Uh, I suppose so. Let's see. Let's see what we get here, okay? Oh, wow. Yeah, let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop that overhead mic here.
Um, so yeah, that uh, that sounds good. Way to mute, Wes. Wes is all over these buttons like a duck on a June bug, like ugly on a monkey. He's busier than a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. Yeah, there's a lot to do back here. At least I have space though now. So that's okay. you know. Hey, if if you feel like it, give give Wes a tip. He he really appreciates that. You, some of you folks have given him tips over the past uh, few months, and it's really nice when he gets them. So I'm asking for him. Yeah, yeah. you guys are awesome. You guys are always giving me tips, and I really appreciate it. Really helps out my situation. Been here early this morning getting this whole thing. You always laugh, but i'm up and you're still in your pajamas so yeah i mean i drove half an hour ready to rock and roll working the whole time working running back and forth in bringing amps and taking pictures and that's true you have i send out five emails in between it all write out the email yeah, and if you check out the description of this video, there's a lot of useful information in there. It's, it's true. I spend a lot of time on that. It was a pain in the ass, but uh, it helps for sure. It's a nice sounding guitar in it. All right, you want to make the switch now? No, I want you... You want to use a track? Yeah, let's use a track. A track, you say. He says a track with a voice so husky it could have pulled a dog sled. Um, okay. Here's that rating day. Let's. <laughs> that one fell flat. That was a bad joke, man. That's a great joke. Here we go. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a sec, give me a sec. Sorry. I uh, put the link for the tips in the uh, chat, guys, if you can help me out. That'd be great. But, wow. Hold on. Hold on. That's loud. Okay, go ahead.
Okay, there is that. All right, let's switch. Yeah, let's. All right, so we'll we'll slide it over now to the Hendrickson. All right, let me get up and move the mic. Hold on. Hold on, I can do it. I can do it. Let me do it. Well, you. How are you gonna do it? I gotta get out of the way. Buddy. Well, because it's gonna take you 15 minutes to no, do it. No, it's not. Oh, give me a break. You're so touchy these days. Oh, God. You can't do anything right. Well, we both agree there for sure. But um. So somebody said shut off the tweeter. Did you see that? On the Henriksen? Yes. Yeah, you'll have to reach back there and see if it, it's probably not turned on, I would imagine. I, I don't think it is. Let me double check. Um, so... So yeah, I mean that also sounded really good with that Eastman too. So I'm Tweeter is off. Tweeter off. Um Curtis Chavez says, uh, has anyone else noticed that the Ibanez George Benson Bensons have gotten way more expensive lately, or am I wrong? You're absolutely right. Everything has. Is that like a brand new one? that you mean or do they make are they even st still making those brand new yeah uh greg in texas says that supro sounds nice but i'm looking forward to rich Shit. switching to the bud to see if my experience is confirmed regarding tube versus solid state amps are you saying that uh tube you like the bud better you like the solid states better there greg um todd says i run the tweeter on with acoustic guitar dobro and vocals typically off with when using a pedal or with electric yeah that makes sense all right um yeah, anyway, Lachlan, thanks for the tip, buddy. Appreciate it. Same with you, James. Really, really appreciate that. You guys are awesome. Really, really, thank you so much. Appreciate that. That's going to be fun, man. Yosemite, Lachlan. I'm yeah. Excited you're going to be there. And Don, and Don, Don. Spain's coming. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to be hanging out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Ooh. God damn. This strap is, it's, uh, it just doesn't stay on anymore. It's, what's going on? Hold on, Wes. Do you have any news? Uh, I'm not even going to answer that because I don't, but, and you know that I don't, but. You, well, I thought maybe you... You thought I went home last night at 9 o'clock and cranked out a bunch of news and uh -huh. woke up this morning at 6 a.m. and searched for more news and uh -huh. then drove here and yeah. got all my... Uh... Oh, man, William, bummer, buddy. What? He said, hello, guys. Off work for six weeks. Broke my foot oh, in no three way. places. And then he says, I have a Fender Reverb Deluxe re <laughs> issue. What <laughs> was a good speaker upgrade? What the heck happened to you, William? That sucks, man. He uh, probably jumped off the roof of one of those school. Yeah, hopefully you didn't fall. But, man, hopefully you're not in too much pain, buddy. But, hey, now you're going to get to sit around at home for six yeah, weeks and what, play guitar. It's one way to get out of a job. Yeah. All right, so here is the guitar. Uh, what me... what's it real, real quick though? What's a a good Fender Reverb speaker upgrade? Rob Riggs would know. Speaker upgrade. Somebody help William out with. Uh, uh, there you go, Weber speaker from WC Ray. Really? I'm sure, some other people got some suggestions out there. Um, Oh, he said he fell down a flight of stairs. Oh, no way. Oh, gosh. That sucks, man. Bummer. Well, I hope you're not in too much wow. pain, man. Yeah, that's a bummer. Sorry, man. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. 
Uh, Barry Cole said two amps over solid state for input impedance and how that reacts with a guitar pickup. Yeah. I hear that. Um, yeah. Uh, Rob says Jensen Falcon Jet. Wow. There you go. Awesome. All right. So, yeah, let's. Uh... Okay. Do uh, you want to play the same song? Yeah. Or, let, let, let's hear it. Shut off the yeah. overhead and then I'll play some. Okay, here you go. Here's the Hendrix in Bud 6. All right, so you are you what was the track that you played last time? Uh um here's that rainy day. So we could do that again. Yeah, let's I I think we should do that again. Already I'm going to say that the Hendrickson is got uh feels like another level of clarity. Mm. You know, it's just gosh, you can hear just how clear everything is on those those Hendrickson's are amazing cuz it's like you're plugged, almost sounds just like you're plugged into the mixing board or something. Yeah, I, I, it's got a little more uspa than that, but I agree. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe there's a, some character differences for sure. Mm -hmm. But I think like someone said, I think it was W.C. Ray said, you know, solid state versus tube is like pasta versus rice. Hmm. You know. Right. Kind what is a, the pasta that looks like rice? What's that called? Risotto? I don't know. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. Ready? All right, here you go. Let's go.
Well, what do you think, guys? Which do you like better, the Supra, Supra, Supro, Supra was a Toyota, um, or the Hendrickson? I think they're apples and oranges. Well, which do you prefer? Do you like apples better? Do you like oranges better? I like apples, but I generally eat apples more than oranges. Well, so which one do you of these do you like better? I think I like the Hendrix better. Sure is lighter. Well, <laughs> and it sounds better. Yeah, like the not based it, on the lightness, just and the it tone. doesn't get hot. Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely is a little little clearer for sure. Um, I think I I think I like the Hendrickson a little better too. Um, Both are about the same price. Yeah, fourteen ninety nine for the Supro. I don't know what the Hendrickson is. I think it's a fourteen, something like that. Todd said, uh, "It's like you lifted a veil off the mids with this amp." Hmm. I mean that mids were. I I get it. Yeah. Oh. Um, but he says he's curious if Rich finds they play feel different. I find the tube usually has a bit of sag and note attack is different. Hmm. That makes sense. Well, what do you think? How do, can you feel that? No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah. Mark says uh, he likes the Supro much better. Better tone. Yeah, I would say that that that's definitely a it is warmer for sure like the the Hendrickson is just so clear it's just amazingly clear where that the um the Supro does have you know a bit of warmth to it that's and a, just a little more character I think you're getting more amp influence obviously off the Supro and then it's like you plug it in and now you're hearing just the guitar only when you plug it into the Hendrickson, you know? Well, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's the Hendrix. It's got its own little sound, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, we had a friend uh, <clears throat> come to the camp last year and uh, Peter had sent a couple Hendrickson amps to us and we had them there and... Um, uh, my friend uh, normally plays the Micro Pro. He heard the Hendrickson and said, that's what I want. And he sold his Micro Pro to Mike Dana, who now owns three of them. <laughs> and, and he bought the Hendrickson. So, you know, I go back and forth. I, I, there's certain things I like about the Micro Pro as well, about the, the quilter. Uh, the Supro... I, I was starting to dig the sound of that. So, um, um, you know, the tube amps, um, I've always had, you know, those issues with tubes after a while when you start slamming the amp around and tubes come loose, and wiggle around. And, yeah. And, yeah, that's a WC Ray said that earlier that you know a tube amp requires m maintenance. Yeah. You know, um, he said you know you kind of need to do like a little checkup on it every year, to yeah. make sure everything's in there and working right and cleaned and. And you really can't go down to Thrifty Drug anymore, where there's they got a tube tester and take your tubes in there and test them and then buy a new one. You know, six L sixes used to be, you know, not a. They weren't that that expensive, you know. Now they're so expensive. I don't know what kind of tubes are in this. Right. I don't think it's six L sixes, but uh, I like this amp. I, I I think. I think I'm blessed with a lot of nice sounding amps. So. <clears throat> yeah, um, and then a couple other comments too. Is Whoops, uh, it's breaking up there. Todd uh, Todd pointed out that the. Hendrickson is made in the USA as well. I don't know where that Supro is made, but I'm guessing. Oh, really? 
Asia, okay. somewhere probably. Oh, I didn't realize that. I didn't. Um, I couldn't f figure out where where it's made. If you do, you know where it's made, Todd? If you can throw it in the chat. Um, let's see. Uh, and then Gordon also points out too, like the Hendrickson is likely to be more reliable in the long run. Safer bet, especially if you're gigging regularly. Yeah, I could see that. Plus, it's got a nice little case it comes with. It does have a gig bag with it, which is sweet. It's got a nice shoulder strap on it. And nice, really quality padded bag. Yeah. Definitely. That um, it does. That it does. Yeah. Um, and then WC Ray is asking, can you uh, please try both with um, a brass slide? Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Maybe why don't we why don't we plan that for next October? Yeah, the the all slide show. All right, uh, let me. I I want to show you guys this guitar. All right, so I bought this guitar as a they call it a husk, right? It's a sixty eight one seventy five. <clears throat> Now what I did, I ordered ordered this brand new. Um, look at that, beautiful. But I went with gold, and because it looks so pretty against this walnut, you know this walnut color, I thought I'd go gold. But do you think I made a mistake in that? Um, so I got some tuners, wherever my tuners are. And here's what I was going to put on. Now, I, I'm looking at the, you know, see this switch isn't gold. But these pickups, by the way, are Dragonfire pickups. And uh, I, I've had these a long time. I've had them on, I actually had them on my L4 uh, for a while. What it, type of pickups are they? They're a single coil, um, kind of like a PAF that fits not a PA, a, a P90 that fits in a humbucker hole. And um, Nate, who, who, who's I've been using for my luthier stuff, uh, put them in there. And I also put a little block in there to, uh, so I could switch pickups really easy, you know, just a little splicing block kind of deal. But anyway, he had these um, pickup covers. So I, said, so, yeah, why don't you put those on there? That's kind of cool. Now, the question is, did I make a mistake in putting that color on there? And should, should I order a pick guard to match that? Or this is what it would look like with a black pick guard. I, I'm almost thinking... I like, I like, if this was white, I think it'd be nicer looking. Though a white pick guard? Not white, but cream. Yeah, definitely. That that looks funky, the black. Black black against this, even if the pickup rings were black and all this was, was yeah. silver. It just is, like, boring. It just kind of doesn't really make anything pop. Plus, it's, like, kind of contrasty with the, on the brown... It's like two dark colors, but they're not. Yeah. They're just two different dark colors that makes it look funky. Yeah. So I'm going to go. I'll, okay, I'll go with cream. Cream and gold, right? Yeah. I mean, I think I, yeah, I, I would definitely do silver. Um, silver? I mean, instead? sorry, do gold instead of silver. Okay. The gold looks cool next to that brown. I think. I do too. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. And see the back of it there, the gold. That's that's pretty. I don't care who you are. It's pretty. It's pretty. Yeah. Sure got pretty. But uh, Barry says tortoise pit guard. Tortoise. Yeah, that might work. I still think. Yeah, you don't. I don't know. You don't see many guitars out there with the cream. No, you pit don't. guard. So I think that would look pretty sweet. I had a uh, one time. I had a Les Paul. Believe it or not. That uh, was uh, kind of a uh, 
kind of this color, this dark maroon. It was a dark maroon color with uh, cream pickup covers, uh, pickup rings, and uh, pick guard. And I thought that looked really pretty. Uh, <laughs> Mother of toilet seat pick guard. Yeah, there you go. I like that, yeah. So, um, anyway, so that's what... Uh, that's that's what I'm. I hope to have it done by next week. And then Wes owes me a hundred dollars. Wasn't that the bet? One dollar was the bet. But still, I mean, we'll see. <laughs> okay. You plug it in, and something's not going to work right. And well, there's always that. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. Nate's dialed that thing in, so. I would I see I I I guess I wasn't I thought you were gonna do all the work, but when you just gave it to Nate and he did all the work in like half a day, then no I I, I was gonna do it and then I thought you know, I don't want to do it. I don't blame you. That seems like it'd be take a long time for sure. I mean it's fun. I I like working on those kind of things. It's enjoyable to me, but I got other things to do, I guess. God, this neck is sticky. I don't know what the hell's going on with that guitar. When we did the opener, I thought, uh-oh, this neck is sticky. I guess I didn't clean it properly. You know, I use that uh, Meguiar's Car Wax, and if you use that on your your neck, God, it makes it nice. And it, it's not all gummy and all that crap. So... Nice. Yeah. It's, it's a proven fact. All right. So uh, you want to play one more tune out of that? Um, play one more song? Yeah, let's play it. We'll, we'll do the style B with the, the Henriksen and see how that sounds. Okay. Let's play a different song. Though. Sure. I, 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 I've learned... I, I've learned all my licks. I, I, I've played all my licks. Yeah, there you go. Pat, Pat's got a great idea here. A plaid pit guard. <laughs> that's not a bad idea. <laughs> right? That's what he said. If you want pop, go plaid. Yeah. Dig it. Let's go way down here. Uh, sauna ship Helsinki, I'm guessing, who's probably in Finland... Um, he said, I heard John Pizzarelli praise the old Ampeg jet, so I got myself one tiny jet, J12, recommended. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to think of a song here. I've got a million of them. I don't like any of them. It's like going to the the market when you're not hungry. If you know what I mean. That's the best time to go. When you're not hungry? Yeah. Yeah, and then you don't buy everything in sight. And you also there you go. don't use a cart. Is this working? Yeah. Uh, no. no. All right. Here we go. You what ready? song? Uh, what song are you this playing? This is uh, "Take the A Train." I went to the T's. Awesome. Let's do it.
Well, I guess that was over. All right, so um, I got to probably work on that track a little. Yeah, I probably needed to turn that thing down a little bit too because David was... Bronson said back in track too hot, slight clipping. Oh. Uh... Oh. Okay, well, what do you think, Wes? Let's wrap it up. Okay, guys, you know what? Thank you again for joining us. I really appreciate it when you guys join us and come in. Those of you watching on the replay, thank you for watching, and I hope you can join us 11 o'clock Thursday morning Pacific time. Yeah, and subscribe if you don't already because... Uh, we're going to be putting out some more videos coming up, and um, it's going to be great. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and make sure you hit that notification button so you know when we're going live. And uh, we will talk to you next time. Kirby showed up. Yeah. Oh. Hey, he's in Kentucky, I think. Yeah. Kentucky rain keeps on falling. Thanks, Kirby. Uh, so, Francis, we'll see you later. Hope to see you Saturday, uh, Friday. Anyway, bye, you guys. Thank you again, and have a 